People collect records for a ton of different reasons, but to non-collectors, the majority of them sound crazy. We will highlight three things that most people don't understand about vinyl collectors in this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent record shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you are in the U.S., you can shop online with us at ntxvinyl.com and would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and follow us across social media on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at ntxvinyl is the handle. Three things most people don't understand about vinyl collectors. This topic came up um, from a conversation I had with a good friend who's actually a, a producer and audio engineer, so very skilled as far as audio and sound is concerned. And he was asking me, what, it is, what is it about vinyl? Like, why are people spending their money on this again? Why are people spending their time on this? It seems like such a pain to him because, you know, again, he knows music, he knows audio, and, uh, you know, has lived his life in a studio for, uh, you know, the last 20, 30 years, um, but he doesn't collect records. So he, he, was tr he was basically picking my brain trying to understand and it, it got me thinking that how misunderstood vinyl collectors really are, right? So the first thing um, that I explained to him and that I'll explain to you, um, and if you're a collector, I think you'll probably get this. If you're a non-collector, we'll see. Um, number one, it's not just about the sound. This was the big thing that he was digging in on. Um, is that he was basically, uh, you know, questioning me. He was like, does it sound that much better? Do people really appreciate that it sounds that much better? And I explained to him, I said, look, if you're a collector and like most collectors and you've got a decent audio system, maybe you've got a couple hundred records or something, that's a pretty big collection for most people. Uh, maybe you've got some bookshelf speakers and, and you enjoy the act of doing it right. Um, you know, you, the act of collecting, the act of, um, owning your media, which we'll get to, and actually listening to it in a physical form. That's a ritual, and there's an experience there, and not a ton of that on that level has to do with sound. I would, I would say, you know, and I'm making these numbers up, but I would say 75% of the people who listen to records on a regular basis do not have a turntable, a cartridge, an amplifier, a preamp, um, a subwoofer, and speakers, an audio setup. They do not have enough of that to actually appreciate the sound of vinyl versus the sound of any other media, whether it be a CD or whether it be a digital or streaming. You know, that's a generalization, of course, but what I'm getting at here is until you invest, I would say, a couple thousand dollars, there's no way you're going to hear the difference. And that's, you know, that's taking into consideration too, that everyone's ears are different. Some people have horrible hearing, some people have great hearing, so that's gonna vary drastically. But the point here is, is that most vinyl collectors, the reason why it's not about the sound is because the sound is the same sound that they would hear if they played um, you know, the CD in a CD player or they got in their car and they streamed it, whatever it may be. Now there's, there's differences because of the environment, but the quality of the sound and the, um, the pureness and the warmness that you get from vinyl, once you get to a certain level um, from, an, uh, from a setup standpoint, isn't really that important for most people because they have a, a turntable that costs a couple hundred dollars, they've invested a little bit in some speakers or an amp, totally fine for them to enjoy the hobby in that way. I enjoyed the hobby that way for probably 20 years before I actually kind of upgraded to something that I think has a little bit better sound or, or represents vinyl a little better. So I think that's the biggest thing. And I was trying to explain that to him and, and he, he got it, you know, he's like, Hey, if, you know, if you only spend in, let's say four or $500 on your turntable and speaker setup, like, no, you're not going to notice the difference between um, a record and a CD or streaming for most people. Right. So I think that's the biggest thing that is misunderstood is that the only reason people are 
uh, gravitating towards vinyls because it sounds better. And that's not the case until you get, until you progress with your system, until you get to a point um, that it, you have the capability to even experience that sound. The second thing that I think is really misunderstood about records is that most people look at a wall like this or the idea of, own, of physical media in general and they just think it's a burden, right? They think it's a burden to have to spend a lot of money on it, to continually um, deal with it, whether you're, you know, uh, moving it around, storing it, um, and then, you know, having to take care of it. And, apps, and then, of course, there's a commitment when you want to go listen to it. Big commitment. You know, you got to sit in the room in most cases. You got to flip the record. You got to actually tend to it, right? And I think the thing that's most understood is that, Vinyl collectors, speaking for myself and probably for some of you, we actually like that commitment. Like, that's what makes it work. You know, you're putting effort in. You have to go to a record store and actually look for it. That's a manual thing. That takes effort. That takes time. In a lot of ways, it takes education and experience to know what you're looking for. We love all that. We love the fact that once we buy it, you know, we're committed to it now. We're putting it on our shelf. And then when we go to listen to it, we have to take time to take it out of the sleeve and clean it if it needs to be cleaned, put it on the turntable, drop the needle, go through that ritual and that experience of listening to a record, which is totally different than just clicking play on your phone and walking around the house, right? So that level of commitment, which I think non-collectors see as a burden, we, or at least I, see it as a, a huge advantage and a huge benefit and something that I love about the hobby of collecting records um, because it forces me to listen. When I've put in the time to go find that record, um, you know, that specific pressing maybe or an album that I've been chasing, I'm going to take the time to add space on my shelf for it. I'm going to take the time when I listen to it. Like since I've invested all that time, I then get a lot more enjoyment listening to it because I'm like, I'm committed to this. I'm in this, not only with my, my time, but also my money and just in general, uh, you know, committed to that experience. So again, I see all those things as a benefit and as a positive, whereas I think most people who don't collect would look at, look at all those things and just see them as a burden, right? The third thing that I think most people don't understand about vinyl collectors is how important it is for us to actually own the music. To younger generations, this is pretty much a foreign concept because they've never owned music because it's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, it's, um, it's an apparition, it doesn't really exist. It's floating out there in space, you know, they know they have access to it, but what does it mean to even own it? You know, Google owns it, Apple owns it, right? The labels and the artists own it. You're just renting it more or less, which is what you're doing when you're subscribing to a streaming service, which I subscribe to. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying that's the reality of it. Owning physical media, buying something that you can hold in your hands, doesn't matter if it's a record, a tape, a CD, um, you know, it, do, it doesn't matter what the physical format is, whatever you enjoy. Um, that's a completely different thing. And again, this goes back to the second point about commitment. Like I'm choosing to own this. I'm choosing to invest in it and choosing to house it in my home and actually um, you know, take ownership of it as a part of my broader collection. So there's, again, that commitment level. And um, that ownership thing, again, is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. They just overlook it or, or don't even overlook it. They just don't even think about it. Because to most people, general public who you know maybe love music, they go see live music, they stream it, but they don't have any, they don't collect records or any physical media, why would they ever think they would need to own their music? Well, you know, why would you need to own your music? Well, not all recorded music is available on streaming. First of all, that's a big thing, especially if you collect uh, stuff that's not, you know, in the mainstream, different, different genres and stuff. There's plenty of stuff that isn't on streaming. So the only way to actually hear it is to own it. So that's number one. And then, of course, you get into the, the debate of, well, you know, what if any of these large tech companies that run all the streaming services decide at any point uh, to remove certain artists or the artists themselves decide to remove their catalogs, whatever it may be. There's been examples of this over the years. By and large, most mainstream popular music is available on streaming, um, but you're not in control of that. And I think for enthusiasts, which most vinyl collectors are enthusiasts on some level, um, they don't like 
the uh, the thought that at any point in time they they don't they won't have access to the music they love. And so for me, having it on this wall behind me and in my room and actually owning that physical media is very, very important. Again, I just don't think that's something that non-collectors understand. So I don't, I don't think they get that, um, you know, it's, I, I don't want to discourage people or, or make people think that I'm, I'm down on streaming music or that type of thing. Cause I, li I do it all the time as well. Um, when I'm not sitting in this room, but the reality is, is I know when I'm doing that, it's just a teaser. It's, it's, it's renting it. You know, um, if I really love it and I really want to commit to it, not only a better sound at a certain level, but the ownership of it, that's why I go to buy a vinyl record. And, uh, I have a feeling that that may play into why you may do it as well. So let me know, um, some other things, if you think of other things that are just misunderstood, questions you get when, when, when people uh, learn that you collect records, like what are people uh, um, not understanding about the reasons why you collect? would love to hear some feedback in the comments. So thanks as always. I appreciate you tuning in. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, and we will see you again soon on another episode of Talking About Records.